So to animate our basic ball, we have to do a couple of different things. But before we do that, we're going to learn a little bit about, we have a drawing layer here. And I named my drawing layer. One of the things that allows us to have more finesse and control over our animation is to attach a peg to a drawing layer. When we attach a peg to a drawing layer, then we can use that to manipulate its position, rotation, and scale, and skew. So we have more control without actually impacting or changing the artwork itself. So it's not like we're making the artwork bigger or smaller, but we use this control peg. And when we do that, for a single drawing layer, it's not a big deal. But when we start building complex characters, where we will have a whole bunch of different layers all for the different body parts, having the control pegs gives us more flexibility in how we connect the pieces together for a complex situation. But when we look at it in the basic form, I have a single drawing layer, and I can here in my timeline, I can click on, we have, if I click here, it adds a drawing. If I click next to it, it adds a peg to it. Now in my network view, I will notice that now just added this green node and this node that it added to it is attached to that drawing layer. Now this peg is going to be the control that I grab onto and work with when I go to animate it. Now I'm also going to notice something else. Now knowing, oh too far, there we go. So this peg layer is the parent of the ball. So we can see that there's an indentation that occurs, so it's moved over. So that peg is controlling it, and I can even collapse that peg because it is a child of that layer. And as you build complex characters, when you have these pegs hooking them all together, your timeline, you'll look and you're like, whoa, that's like a hundred different layers. That's too much to see at once. And you can click the little arrow to collapse it so that we have more available to us and we're not just overwhelmed with layer fatigue seeing too much at any one time. And now that I've done this, we'll see my artwork is, ooh, look, it's only one frame long. But if I want to animate this now, I can ex go to the end of time and just simply hit F5 while well, it's collapsed. And then by doing that, we can see that it automatically added the frames for that layer. Now that may not seem like a big deal for one layer. But if I have a character that's comprised of, say, 100 layers, and if I collapse everything to its topmost handle or control peg, I can now click out at the end of time, hit F5, and every single layer for that character will extend out. Instead of having to go one by one, click on a layer, hit F5, click on a layer, hit, wow, that's really going to suck after a while. And I wouldn't want to do that. So we'll, we'll learn about that and see that a little bit later. So over in the network view on the side over here, we can see how this peg is controlling this ball. And if I name my layers, then the pegs get named nicely as well. They use the layer name dash and then a capital P indicating that this is a peg. But in the network view, pegs always show up as a green layer, drawing layers show up as a blue layer. Now if I want to animate this, I don't use my drawing tool, but I use my animation tools, which are across the top of the screen. So I have translate, I have rotate, I have scale, I have skew. Those are the four I'll use most commonly. Now, one thing about my object here is its registration point is always going to start at the middle of the screen. So if I were to rotate this, you can see how it's rotating around the middle. But if I wanted my ball to rotate around its middle, I need to change where the location is of that registration point. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now, we can do that. We can move that anchor point by grabbing it with the rotate animation tool. And I can move to a new place so now we can see if it rotates, it's rotating around whatever middle that I wanted to attach to my ball. Now there's something else that's important to keep in mind is 
my drawing layer has an anchor registration point. My peg layer has an anchor registration point. If we are going to animate through our pegs, we don't need to worry about the registration or anchor point for the drawing layer because we can see it's still back to the middle of the screen. But the peg, it's over here. So that's something that's important to keep in mind. So if I am here on frame one, it's a good practice when you are starting to animate and work with the peg to click on the starting frame where you wish to animate and you insert a keyframe. We can do that by hitting F6 on the keyboard that inserts a keyframe. Now I had inserted a keyframe accidentally because I was at the end of time when I was doodling around before. That's why we see the line going across the screen here indicating, hey look, you know, there's some animation going there. But if I click on a keyframe and hit F7 on the keyboard, it deletes whatever keyframe is there. So I can even go back to the beginning, F7. Oh look, now there's no more keyframes. So at this point, first frame, hit F6. I can go to the end, and if I want to move my artwork, I can grab the Translate Animation tool. Now, all of these animation tools of Translate, Rotate, Scale, Skew, they're actually all embodied in our Transform tool underneath the little yellow running man. So if you want access to them, they are located there. So you can just do that, and then I move to a corner and I can rotate. If I move, grab it, I can move it over. And now I can see, oh look, we have animation. Oh, I'm so excited now, it's moving across the screen. So we can use the transform tool, or if you are doing things where it's going to, you want more control, you want to know that at some point I am only rotating. Okay, I'm only rotating. At some point I am only translating. Then I only translate. So then you know what is happening. So some people will prefer to use the standalone tools for only rotate and only translate. Others will like to just use the transform tool because that works for you and that's okay too. It's personal preference at this point. So I can move it over, go to a corner, rotate, and we can see it rotates its way across the screen. So basic animation. Gotcha moment here to use our uh, political season nomenclature of it's gotcha question here. So with our gotcha, now remember, if I look in the network, I can see my ball peg is highlighted. Not highlighted, highlighted. When a peg layer is highlighted, that layer takes on a yellowish cast. If nothing's highlighted, I can see there's my artwork. If I click on the artwork layer, it actually takes on a magenta or purplish cast. Peg, drawing, peg, drawing. So it's really important when we are animating, if you see a purple outline around the artwork, not a yellow outline, that means you are not animating with the peg. And this makes a difference because when you are doing certain kinds of things, especially in a multi-layer animation, you have to be really conscious of, did I select the peg or did I select the drawing layer? Fortunately, in our tool properties, we do have an option to help us with that with the transform tool selected or any of my animation tools I have an option to say I want to when I click it chooses a peg so even if the artwork is selected now if I click with that tool we'll click off it first and now I'll click we can see it selected the peg for it and we can set that up with the transform tool rotate tool translate so for those animation tools if we go into Tool Properties, select the Peg Selection Mode, it will automatically choose the peg. Otherwise, it chooses the artwork, which often is something we do not want. So, 
make sure you are selecting the pegs and working with that. That's kind of actually big. So that's not a little side note, oh, just file it away is be conscious, be aware of, are you adding your keyframes and animation to the artwork or to the pegs? Because in a whole rigged character, that will come back to haunt you if you don't do it right. So now that we have the basic concept of working with a peg down, doing some basic animation here, whether I use my transform tool, move it around so we'll see, it goes up and down, la di da. Now there is something to notice here is the path that my artwork is taking. So I'm going to get rid of all my keyframes here and just reset a few so I can be very deliberate so we can really see what's going on. So again, if I click on F7 on keyframes, they go bye-bye. So now I'm back at the beginning. Here I am. I'm going to go to the end. I'm just going to move this over. I'm going to go to the middle. Move it down. Now if we watch the animation, well, notice how the animation is following this really nice, pretty arc. It's following a nice, pretty arc. Which, if I have another drawing layer, just for fun. And with this, uh, all right, I'm reversing my fill an outline, but that's okay. Now if I don't use a peg on this layer, so we can see, okay, here it is. Hit F6. Move it over. Move it down. Well, notice that its motion is following straight lines. But when we animate a peg layer, by default, it follows a beautiful arc. We'll even exaggerate that a little bit more. Put this one up here, put this one up here, so we can see how it's, it's following an arc versus two straight lines using peg versus animating a drawing layer. So we can control. So we have straight line curve. Now while we're doing this, we need to be able to see something. And anytime we have our different windows here, if we right click, there's certain other options, like these buttons up here, that we can make available. So if I right click and choose camera view, I'll notice it just added in some more buttons. Now sometimes people want to see you know, different grids, they can lock layers, but the one that we're looking for is the one that is going to show us the path that our animation is following. And we can see that there's a difference in the path, even though we're still following the same kind of result. Now, what's interesting about this path as we work with it, uh, I'm just going to turn off that layer. So if I take this artwork here and move it, you'll see now a visual representation of where this artwork is animating. Something to also pay attention to is if you look at these frames, each hash mark on here represents one of the frames in my timeline. And since I have my middle keyframe here at 30, I have 30 frames here and 30 frames here. Now I have a really packed on that side. So we have adjustments that we can do. But what's fun about this is while we can set it up this way, if I put my cursor over my path and hit P on the keyboard, it inserts a control peg. 
which allows me to reshape the curvature of my line. Now it's really important when you do this that if I put my cursor over it, I'm like, okay, I want it right here and go, I just held P for a little bit because I was, so if you think that it's waiting for you to like, okay, really commit to it, or I'd say I just put a gazillion control points there, which makes this pretty much unmanageable. So I need to do a bunch of undos. So it will add these control points based on the keyboard repeat rate. So just tap P. Be careful you don't insert too many. But I could now go right here, insert P again, and we see that we could put a little hook in the line. So without even having to enter in keyframes and carefully like keep moving the object around, we can now shape the path that an object is following when it animates. So this can be useful if you're trying to say the path of a bird or the path of a ball or a butterfly or something moving around on screen. You now have the ability to control its trajectory and adjust how it moves around on screen. Now if I put my cursor say here and then move the artwork move the artwork, we'll see how the path is being adjusted, but that control point isn't moving. So we can see that control point I put in is kind of fixed in place. And if I hit delete on the keyboard, the control point goes away. So if I don't want it or if I can hit P again, I can slide it around. So these control points give us the ability to manage or shape an animation path. And now if you don't want to see that orange line, you just click the button, poof, it goes away. Now we can see I have a very complex movement with really very few keyframes.